The Lawrence Russell Show Starring Lawrence Russell And now a special message from Peggy Ferran Ontological sense is non productive. Which page do I start with? That's the last one. Uh, we'll talk a little bit louder, maybe like this when I'm talking. Um, visibility, visibility is a trap, trap. it summons surveillance, uh, it surveillance. It summons surveillance. It the, the, the colonialist imperial appetite for possession. Yet, yet it retains a certain political appeal. Visibility, visibility politics, practical consequences. consequences. A line can be drawn between a practice, getting someone seen or read, read and, a, and theory. a theory. If you are seen, it is harder for them, them, them to, to ignore you, to construct a, to construct a punitive canon. The two can be, the two can be re 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 While there is a deeply ethical struggle in the desire for a more inclusive representational landscape, and certainly underrepresented communities can be empowered by an enhanced visibility, the terms of this visibility often enervate the putative power of these identities. A much more nuanced relationship to the power of visibility needs to be pursued than the left currently engages. Arguing that communities of the hitherto underrepresented will be made stronger if representational economies reflect and see them, progressive cultural activists have staked a huge amount on increasing and expanding the visibility of racial, ethnic and sexual others. It is assumed that disenfranchised communities who see their members within the representational field will feel greater pride in being part of such a community, and those who are not in such a community will increase their understanding of the diversity and strength of such communities. Implicit within this argument are several presumptions which bear further scrutiny. One. Identities are visibly marked, so the resemblance between the African-American on the television and the African-American on the street helps the observer see they are members of the same community. Reading physical resemblance is a way of identifying community. 2. The relationship between representation and identity is linear and smoothly mimetic. What one sees is who one is. 3. If one's one mimetic, mimetic likeness is not, not represented, represented one is not addressed. Four, increased, increased, increased visibility equals increased power. Increased power. Each of these presumptions reflects the ideology of the physical, an ideology which erases the power of the art, unspoken and unseen. Repeat the last line. Page 10. The focus on skin as the visible marker of race is itself a form of feminizing those races which are not white. Reading the body as a sign of identity is the way men regulate the bodies of women. Lorene Carey tells a West Indian folktale in Black Ice. A woman drapes her skin across a chair in the bedroom she shares with her husband and slips out a window to enjoy the night. Night after night, she leaves their bed. Indigenous dream interpreters, as against Freudian ones, would say she is walking with the invisible. She's always careful to return before her husband wakes. She slips back into her skin and then back into their bed. But one night her husband wakes and sees her skin across the chair. He's distraught. He seeks the advice of an old woman in the village. She tells him to take some salt and rub the inside of the empty skin with it. A few nights later, the woman leaves again, and the husband applies the salt to her skin. When she returns to her skin, it will not yield. Skin, skin, you know, know me, she screams. Caught between her body and her spirit, her insides keep her out. The husband, who believes he has a right to the entrances and exits of her body, can coat the inside of her skin with salt, but he cannot keep her home. His failure to hold her, her in their bed, bed prompts him to make her skin unable to household her spirit. spirit. Both exiled, her question hangs in the air. air. Skin, skin, you know no me. The woman's voice it cannot reanimate her skin, and she remains lost to her own body because of his desire to mark it as his. Six. 
Invisibility is a trap. It summons surveillance and the law. It provokes voyeurism, fetishism, the colonialist imperial appetite for possession. Yet it retains a certain political appeal. Visibility politics have practical consequences. A line can be drawn between a practice, getting someone seen or read, and a theory. If you are seen, it is harder for them to ignore you, to construct a punitive canon. The two can be reproductive. While there is a deeply ethical appeal in the desire for a more inclusive representational landscape, and certainly underrepresented communities can be empowered by an enhanced visibility, the terms of this visibility often enervate the putative power of these identities. A much more nuanced relationship to the power of visibility needs to be pursued than the left currently engages. Arguing that communities of the hitherto underrepresented will be made stronger if representational economies reflect and see them. Progressive cultural activists have staked a huge amount on increasing and expanding the visibility of racial, ethnic and sexual others. It's assumed that disenfranchised communities who see their members within the representational field will feel greater pride in being part of such a community, and that those who are not in such a community will increase their understanding of the diversity and strength of such communities. Implicit within this argument are several presumptions which bear further scrutiny. First, that identities are visibly marked, so the resemblance between the African-American on the television and the African-American on the street helps the observer see that they are members of the same community. Reading physical resemblance is a way of identifying community. Second, the relationship between representation and identity is linear and smoothly mimetic that what one sees is who one is. Third, that if one's mimetic likeness is not represented, one is not addressed. And fourth, that increased visibility equals increased power. Each of these presumptions reflects the ideology of the visible, an ideology which erases the power of the unmarked, unspoken. 